Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I made my first set of cards using the May 2020 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, get some special cutting tips, and see how I made these. I want to say a great big welcome back to my subscribers and regular viewers and if this is your first time to my channel and you would like to download the free printable make sure to click that subscribe button below and while you're at it maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. So yesterday was the big debut of the May 2020 sheet load of cards. In that video I shared a look at each of the cards I created this month and I let you know how you can download the free printable for yourself as long as you're a subscriber to my channel. If you're interested in downloading this, once you watch my video today, make sure to check out the debut video. I have it linked in the description box below and I'll pop it up as a card at the end of this video. One thing that you'll really wanna watch for today is how I cut these pattern pieces for the front of my card because we're actually gonna cut the whole thing and then stack two patterns together and cut them down to the final size. But before I get started on that process, let me share with you some of the products that I'll be using today. For my stamps today, I'll be using the Sentimental Clear Stamp Set from There She Goes. I just love the mix of the sans serif font with the cursive handwritten look font. Now, unfortunately, this stamp set, and I believe this company, is no longer available, but I will try to link some similar stamp sets below if you want to check those out. For my ink, I'll be using this Stampin' Spot from Stampin' Up. It is the basic gray color, and I just thought that this goes well with the pattern paper that I'll be using today because it's not quite black in the background, and this is a nice dark gray. And I'll be using this die from Paper Tray Ink, and I will cut these out and stamp my sentiments on them. I will, of course, be using this month's sheet load of cards, which again is a free printable for my subscribers. I got out pink cardstock and white cardstock, and later you'll see which pieces I use those for. And then for my pattern paper, I chose these two pieces from Die Cut with a View's Hello Darlin' Stack. Once I start the process for this video, I will go to a voiceover. Make sure that if I leave you with any questions, you leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I'm gonna get started today by cutting my card stocks. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut my three pieces of pink per the instructions for CS1. This will end up being four pieces that are four by five and a quarter inch each. So I cut down two strips that were five and a quarter inches, and then I cut each of those pieces into two more pieces that were four inches wide. Next, I got out my piece of white cardstock that I'll be using for the CS2. Now, because I'm gonna be die cutting these, I actually just needed this piece of cardstock smaller so I could run it through my die cutter. So I cut two strips that were five inches wide and I just left the other dimension at eight and a half. Later, I do end up needing to grab a couple scraps from my stash to finish cutting all 12 of those. Now let's figure out how to cut these pattern papers. We want to yield six pieces from each pattern paper that is three and five eighths inches wide by four and seven eighths inches tall. Now if your paper has a top and bottom, if the pattern does have that, you will wanna make sure when you do this first cut at three and five eighths that your paper is reading the correct way for you. So I got three strips out of this that were three and five eighths inches wide. Once I cut those, I turned them to be landscape and I cut two pieces out of each at four and seven eighths. You're going to do the same thing for the other piece of pattern paper before we move on to cutting them down to the final smaller size pieces. And just a reminder that you don't really have to pay attention to the instructions I'm giving on screen, especially those dimensions, because everything is given on the free printable. Don't forget, you can go to yesterday's video to find out how to download that. 
Now that both of those are cut, we're gonna cut them down to the smaller final size. You will want to grab one piece of each of the pattern papers and stack them together. Now, if you pay attention to the cutting guide, the top square is two inches. And I think that that's a lot easier to cut than trying to pay attention to the other dimensions. So I slide my paper into the two inch mark and slice it. And then I turn those to be horizontal, move them to that same two inch mark and then cut. And you'll want to do these for each of the two strips that you just cut and make sure that you're leaving those pattern papers nice and stacked on top of each other so they're all uniform. Once you've cut those, then you wanna mix and match those pieces. You'll have one of each pattern on the top and bottom and the diagonal patterns are the ones that match. Now you'll want to stack these up together. So this is actually two cards that we just cut and you'll just wanna make sure that you keep each of these 12 piles separate from each other. That way when we go to put the cards later together, the pieces won't be mixed up. For the last set, I cut the right two inches off first, but you can also turn these pieces horizontal and cut off that top two inches first and then just rotate those and then cut the two inches off the right side. You can do whichever feels easier to you. I will say that for the rest of these pieces, I did do it this second way. And then the mixing and matching is the same as that first set of cards I cut. You'll just keep up this same process for all 12 sets. And I know that right now it seems like a lot of cutting, but it isn't too bad and it goes pretty quickly once you get in a good rhythm. Once all of these pieces are cut, now we're gonna start assembling our card according to the sketch on page one of the file. When I assemble my cards, I go ahead and lay out all of the pieces and rotate any if I think they might look better. Then I take my top left, put adhesive on that, and then I place it on the top left of my mat or my CS1, and I leave about an eighth of an inch on the left and top. My next piece, the two inch square, will go on the top right. And I align that at the same level as the piece I just placed and then leave that eighth of an inch to the right side. I place the bottom two pieces in this same way. I just try to align it with the pattern pieces that have already been adhered down. If you notice later that the cross where they meet or that center point in between all the pattern papers isn't exactly perfect, it doesn't really matter because later that will be covered up by your CS2 piece. But by cutting those two pattern pieces together, it did avoid too much messiness where they meet up because all of those pieces were cut at the same exact mark on your cutter. You will then just continue this process until you have created all 12 of your card fronts. Now, you might have noticed that I did not cut and fold my card bases in front of you. That's because I already have a stash here that is pre-cut and pre-scored. But if you're starting with full sheets of paper, you'll just cut it in half to four and a quarter inches wide by 11 inches tall, and then you can fold those in half for your card bases. And speaking of card bases, it's now time to get our pattern paper piece adhered to those. I am just gonna adhere these flat down onto the card front because I will be adding some dimension later when I put my CS2 on with foam squares. The next step is gonna be to get my focal points or my sentiment pieces all ready to go. Like I mentioned before, I will be using this die for my CS2, but you could use paper punches, or if you don't have dies or paper punches, you can always just cut squares and rectangles with your paper trimmer. Make this fit whatever sentiments or image you want to use. Once I die cut the first one of these, I thought I would get out my little spellbinders tool and try to poke the doily out of this die, but unfortunately the only holes are behind what's supposed to come out of the doily, so I kind of had to pry that out of there with the picky part, 
If you have a die like this that doesn't have a hole so you can poke out what you want, let me know below what you do. While you watch me cut and try to pry some more of those doilies out of this die, I want to let you know what today's secret word is. Now, if you're not sure what these secret words are for, I am currently celebrating my 10,000th subscriber with kind of a little secret word scavenger hunt. Make sure to check out the video with the announcement and all of the rules so you can find out how you can be entered to win one of four $25 gift cards. Today's secret word is doily. Oh no! Before I move on to show you what I'm going to do with these die cuts, I wanted to stop by with a little mishap. I was cleaning out my PTI die with my Spellbinders tool in one, and one thread came out, but I just kept cleaning, and they all just proceeded to fall out into my recycle bin. Don't know if this is supposed to happen, and I probably will buy another one because I love this, but in the meantime, if you don't have one of these and you need to clean out dyes like this, you can just try a cheap toothbrush. I had actually bought some of these at Dollar Tree the other day. I got four for a dollar, and it is a soft one, so it doesn't work as good, but you can sometimes, too, just run this along the back, and then, if you have any left in your dye, the soft is actually probably better for this. You can also use the toothbrush on that. Just a little tip for if you don't have this or if yours decides to just shoot craps on you. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. Now let's get some sentiment stamped onto these doilies. To make it go a little bit faster, I did get out my Misty stamp positioner, and because the doily is too small to get the stamp and the magnet onto it, I am just placing my doily in the lower right hand corner, trying to make sure that the two points are kind of straight up and down there. So I place that, ink up my stamp, and then stamp it onto my doily. And at first I'm like, oh, that's not very dark, but I remembered I purposely chose an ink that wasn't exactly black. So I ink up each of those and I stamp them until I have 12 sentiments. That went pretty quickly and now it's time to get these put onto the cards. Like I mentioned before, I'll be using foam tape squares to adhere these to the card front. That way I have just a little added dimension which also adds a little interest. Now these foam squares that I'm using here are from the Dollar Tree and for some reason this batch I have to wrestle with that release paper. But because they're so cheap I decided to just keep on trying and while it took me a little longer than normal it still got the job done. And once again, I continued this same process for all 12 cards. Now you can totally stop right now and your cards will be done. But I did decide that I wanted to bring out some more of the pink from the floral pattern paper and add a little sparkle to my cards. So I got out my pink gems and I adhered three to each of the card fronts. I adhered two small ones and one medium size one. And here's a close-up look at the final cards. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's set of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit all of the collaborators. All of their links are in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.